So my next guest today is Stephen Grindle, aka Dingle Fingle from the video A Day Full of Fun. So let's welcome Dingle Fingle. So what was your training and background to do circus skills? Um, as a child, I'd grown up doing crazy things, building mad push bikes and just being a bit of an eccentric child. My sister said, when I became a clown, you've just carried on doing it now, but now you're earning money from it. So my skill sets um, have grown with me over the years. So, um, yeah. Does that answer your question properly? Yeah. How do you get the name Dingle Fingle? Uh, I went to bed one night having spent probably about four hours writing, scribbling, brainstorming. And when I went to bed, there was just something that clicked. And when I woke up in the morning, Fingle Dingle was in my head. Yeah. And when I joined Gandhi's Circus, a friend of mine, Ian, made it grammatically correct and called me Dingle Fingle, which is why it stuck. And so everybody in the circus called me Dingle, and that's a nickname that I still use to this day. I'm going to take these off because it's blinding me. The thunder through those is like, oh. So, yeah, that's how I came up with the name. Mm -hmm. How did it get to be in a day full of fun? Uh, an agent of mine had, who I'd known for a long time, had the contact and essentially set it up so that um, I, was, I, was I was the lucky one that got the job, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, through an agency. In the video, you did loads of skills like running a unicycle and doing cartwheels. How is that part? How did, did you learn how to do that as a child or part of your training? Well, that, that was actually part of my training. Before I'd before I'd gone to um, uh, join the circus or anything like that, I was at, believe it or not, Butchery College in Blackpool. Uh, so a meat technology uh, course for three years. And I bought a unicycle there. And I'd studied butchery, but on the side, I was riding my unicycle around everywhere, up and down the promenade. So I got very, very good on it. And then I joined, um, and then I joined Gandhi's, and I gone up to Philip Gandhi, and, and I said, well, you know, I can, sh I can ride a unicycle, and I can shovel shit like anybody else. Um, so I'll, um, I'll basically be. Uh, uh, um, sorry, we got interrupted then. So the unicycle, uh, Blackpool. And then I joined Gandhi's and and then I'd gone to the Blackpool Tower Circus after I'd left Blackpool where I was studying for to be a butcher. So the unicycle, me up and down Blackpool. So then I went back to, this is my first ever gig. I went mm -hmm. back to uh, Blackpool to join Blackpool Tower Circus for the first ever call up for the clowns. Mm -hmm. And it was the first circus school in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was for a week long course for clowns basically so um i did not get a job from that so i just carried on learning my my skills to uh, um, make my circus career happen mm -hmm. so you know costumes think about the makeup a little bit more uh my workload got more regular because people in my area and the country knew about me because when i was in blackpool the the course that I did, they marketed so well mm. that, uh, and the people that won it, I didn't win it, unfortunately. People who won it got lots and lots of good press. Mm. I got some, mm. uh, but locally I got a lot. So I got a lot of local work. So I was increasing my magic skills. I was increasing my, uh, I've always been able to fall over. I learned judo as a child. Mm. So my, my falling over skills are still with me today. I, I, that's actually one of my favorite things. I love physical slapstick. Um, why I don't know, but mm. I do. Uh, so the 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 progress of going from um, being a young boy and um, you know playing with fire as a young boy and little things like that that grew into me playing with fire as an adult. Mm. So I realised that I, I love fire. Uh, I love that uh, element, the pure element of it. And so I learned to juggle, and that then allowed me to go to Covent Garden and start busking in Covent Garden. So all these skills were like steps along the way. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Where do you film the Dream Dinosaur scenes? Um, I was asked to come in and essentially uh, uh, do those parts that you saw. They were all scripted for me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a couple of bits that I'd improvised, i.e. the unicycle in the 
uh, restaurant because they wanted me just as a clown going around. I said, well, if I can do it a lot better than that, I'll, yeah. I'll get on my bike. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where that came from. And the cartwheels, uh, when I look at those cartwheels now, I think, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Again, you know, years later, I went on and perfected the, the mime techniques that I try and do in that video. Uh, and I, I learned mime a lot later on. Uh, I did a, an intensive course for uh, was it, uh, three, three years, three months for three years. Something. Anyway, it was a long course, uh, but it but it served me very well. And when I look back at those little mime pieces that I did in there and the slow motion for one, um, I, I've I've gone up to such a higher level now uh, because I went and learnt it. I went and learnt another skill. So uh, it was a um, it was it, it was interesting that the, the cartwheels as well because that was improvised. Uh, I'm just trying to think through the um, through the actual day because I was it, it was strange as a performer. I, I I was asked to go in and um, do these skits, yeah. which were yeah. there. But then when the children had a break, hmm. I had to go and entertain the children mm -hmm. in the back where the back room was as an entertainer, which I did. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got to go back filming again. So mm -hmm. by the end of the day, I, I was pretty darn tired. What was the studio, the Dream Diner? And what was the studio called? Uh, I honestly don't know what the studio was called. Uh, if I remember, my memory serves me correctly, it was in London. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was North London somewhere. Now, I know that it was... Uh, it was all... The, the, the house... Because there was a... Uh, the house is there was their house, I think, but the studio was elsewhere. So it looked like you're going into the house, and then yeah. It, it, but the studio was elsewhere. It wasn't done in the house. I, I if, if my memory serves me right, my memory serves me correctly. But uh, oh, they were lovely to work with. Janet Janet Ellis was a was a dream, and uh, Sophie Ellis Baxter, obviously, who was in that video, uh, who later became very quite famous. Mm -hmm. uh, she was lovely, and her brother. Uh, I, I, um, he was he was there, but then he wasn't in the. Um, sorry, he wasn't there, but he was in the running of the uh, program, the the music videos. He mm -hmm. was in those, yeah. so uh, I didn't get to meet him. But um, I think Janet, if I memory again serves me correctly, I think Janet Ellis was uh, 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 married to the producer of, yeah. of the program. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the case. Yeah, he but... died a few years, a couple of years ago now, John Leach. He d died of cancer, I heard. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. Horrid. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Terrible. Oh, I did not know. Yeah. Oh, Who so, sorry in... to hear that. Yeah. Who were in the character costumes in the video? I honestly don't know. Not me. No. I don't do character costumes. I get too... Although I've got two at home... I don't do uh, I don't do it. I get all claustrophobic and yeah. Uh. I wonder was it Sophie in the one of the costumes when he did the super Ted into space or something? I honestly can't remember. I honestly can't remember. No. I honestly can't remember that. I remember the um the green screen background that mm. we did the slow motion walk on and the the, the last one of the last songs. Yeah, with the Super Ted. Mm. Um, but yeah, wow, it's a long time ago now. A long, long time ago. What it was like working with Janet Ellis and the family, we sort of touched about this. Uh, lovely, lovely. They were all, you know, it, it was like a family affair. We were, we were treated very well with respect and, uh, you know, everybody pulled their weight. Everybody got on with it. We had a job to do. So mm. that, um, that was our focus. So yeah, all good. All good, all very good. Yeah, I didn't see anything or hear anything of, of them afterwards. I was hoping that Sophie Ellis Baxter would pick it up, being a singer, and make the next one. What did she? I know she was a backing singer, but what else she was doing on the video? She, 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 the little girl in that with the hat on, the little the hat that sits like this. No, that's the other daughter. That was Miriam. Martha. Oh, is it Miriam? No, Martha. I mean. Goodness me! See, I, I, I'm not. I, I, it's a long time ago. I'm trying to. All my memories together now. Yeah. Was it a deliberate choice of the song choices like Zippity Doo Dah, Hi Ho, 
food glorious food then the song i have no glorious. idea i have i have i cannot answer that question for you i did not uh lay down the, the lines like i said all i did was do my job of going in and mm. Uh, doing my part in the in the video and then having uh, having to entertain the middle and then doing my part in the video yeah. in the afternoon. So, like, I, sorry, no, I can't answer that. One. Okay, no worries. Was there any funny moments happened on set? Funny moments that happened on set. Um, the uh, what happened on set, I one thing that sticks out and it's still in the video. Um, I forget which line it was. One of them improvised the line. And it's out, it's out of this world. No, what, we're sat in a diner and it's the, the little boy with the blonde hair. I can see him sat there, but he improvised something. And uh, so, so it, 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 we were laughing about it. So I remember that. Uh, but, but children are lovely. They, you know, they they were so uh, well behaved. All those children and um, allowed to have fun, <laughs> which was you know what it was all about. And what it says on the title? Absolutely, yeah. No, I was very pleased I got it. I mean, for the for the um, for the small one time that I did it, I've been recognised many times for it, and I had one lady come up and tell me that. She'd had three ge three generations had seen it, so her, her daughter, and her daughter's daughter was now seeing it. Oh. So it shows how long ago it was. And all yeah. my children have seen it. All my children have grown up with it. Yeah, that's one of the questions actually. Do you kept any props from the video or anything, or do you kept anything from the video or anything? No, n nothing at all. No, I was, um, I don't even think I've got that costume anymore. The hat went. Because the hat I used at Chessington, the costume I used at Chessington, and those have all gone by the wayside. No, I didn't. No, I mean, uh, unless you unless you're given something, I never take anything from a job. It's just unprofessional. But no, to an answer your question, no, I didn't. Yeah, you talked about um, do you get any recognised? What's the best reaction? You say, oh my god, you were in that video. Um, like I say, the best reaction was the one of the the lady saying, well, you've got um. You know, you you got three generations that have watched it. I think that was my best reaction. That's the one that stuck in my mind. Um, but yeah, when you know people come up to you and and they've seen your video as a child and now they're fully grown adults, it's quite a um, it's touching. <laughs> and people listen to Sophie's work as well. It makes it weird as well. Yep, yep, yeah. But it's it's great how uh, you know people develop and. You know, she became a singer and moved her career on. Obviously, her mother was a TV presenter, and um, and then she carried the mantle through. You know, the the performance mantle through and became a singer and uh, went down that road. But yeah, it's all um, it's all progress forward, like yeah. learning new skills. Yeah, it is. It is. How do you feel? It's got a million hits on YouTube. I didn't know it's got a million hits on YouTube. That's absolutely what, really? Yeah, it's got a million hits. Blimey! No, I really didn't know that. That's absolutely fantastic. Wow, a million hits! I've never had a million anything. <laughs> I'm hoping for a million pounds soon. <laughs> Do you still keep in contact with Janet or any of the kids or any or the production team? No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, my wife, who sat next to me here, has badgered me for years that I should get in contact with them and make Janet, uh, Sophie, do another, um, uh, uh, you know, another take of it. You know, they full of songs too. Um, but no, I, I have not kept in contact. Again, it was it was a job I did, and I was it was it was a job I was lucky to get. Uh, I was the right person for the job at the right time. So uh, that's that's my take on it, really. Yeah, it's all. Um... Yeah, so it, it's exciting at the time. You know, it's it's a job you you do your job, and then you go to the next job, and you do the next job, and you go to the next job. And my job's not a normal job, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I wish I'd kept in contact with the family and kept those contacts up. But your world gets bigger. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you have to kind of expand your horizons. Um, and I, you know, if I'm to be honest with all, any of my work. The, the, most of it is 
kept professional and uh, there's not many people that um although i'm friendly with everybody obviously mm-hmm. you know the the level of um association can't be so much because it's such a big horizon yeah. mm-hmm. one million views that's brilliant <laughs> I, wish they, I wish they can make another video of a day full of songs slash day full of song fun and that sort of stuff I wish they'd do another an up to date chase chase them up you do it and I'll do it. <laughs> uh, if you can go on my YouTube channel, I do some I don't know a couple of remakes of A Day Full of Songs and A Day Full of Surprises on Songs, so check those out. Yeah, I did have a brief look the other day. Yeah, yeah. No, all good, all good. And don't stop, you know, like this channel, don't stop. So my question is now, what are you doing nowadays as a performer? As a performer, I still run my comedy car act uh, throughout the UK in the summer. Mm. And um you know, well, from now onwards, really, through till September. Uh, I actually live in Holland, so any work, uh, majority of my work is over here. Any work with a comedy car is kept in the UK, uh, obviously because it's a hassle to get the props over. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, work around here is, um, you know, family events and company events. Um, I set up an agency called Show World, and so for the past... Uh, however many years uh, I've been writing shows and you know helping put artists together for certain packages of entertainment and so that's another sort of skill that to my set that I learned and I've always been interested in business so the agency was a natural way of earning money when I wasn't performing so I still uh, I still got that agency and you know we go out to Dubai and mm other places fly around the world like entertainers do um but i've i've slowed down a lot of recent well the last five years really seven seven now i've slowed down a lot um because i live in holland and want to enjoy my children and when you're an entertainer you're on the road all the time or you know in a venue for a long period of time away from home so to answer your question what am i doing now as an entertainer um still performing Mm -hmm. Not as much as I was, probably, you know, 60% less than I was before, but that's all good because, you know, I'm I'm healthy, fit, and I'm enjoying my life like I'm on the beach now. Oh, I'm not stuck in a car on the M6. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it's, um, it's something I'll never stop. Yeah. I'll probably stop the agency at one time, but uh, the, the performing, it, I, it's something... Uh, yeah, it's, it's something I've got in me. <laughs> I've been doing it ever since I was a kid, according to my sister. <laughs> so, yeah. You worked with another famous bear, Sooty. What was it like working on the Sooty show? Great. Great. That was a blast. A proper blast, yeah. They, um, they said to me what they wanted to do, and um, and obviously, I don't know if you've seen it, it's on YouTube. Yeah. It's good. The old, uh, the old comedy car there, um, driving around a, a, a park, you know, a caravan park, mm. that was just great with all the smoke going off and and their attention to detail of what they wanted was was fantastic. And uh, you know, um, Richard Cadell, uh, a lovely man, and knew exactly what he wanted. And how, you know, again, it was all professionally done. The um, the 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 program that I saw was was great. I I taken uh, my little GoPro camera and my other camera along with me, and they were all, all right with me filming as long as I didn't show it. Mm-hmm. Kept it for myself. So I've got all of these outtakes of mm-hmm. of, of Sooty in the car and uh, Sooty like improvising in the car and uh, yeah, wonderful, absolutely wonderful. They uh, they also had a, 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 towards the end um, there's Beppo. In the, uh, I don't know if they showed that scene actually. There's a scene where the the wheels all fall off the car, and anyway, Beppo and I are in the car, and we we bang heads and fall out. I don't actually think they showed that one. Um, but no, the whole team were great. I'd happily go and do it again, uh, um, and uh, you know, work the car again in that in that uh, type of uh, work situation, rather than it being a clown stunt show. And the diving in and falling out of the car and being a live act, you know, just using the car in a stationary fashion to create storyline and create humour. Um, but uh, yeah, so there were a lot of great gags in that 
my favourite one, which was actually um, Simon Cadell's. It's just Simon, yeah. I won't I wanted to go Richard then, but Simon. Um, he he said to me, "I want to put a I want to put a sauce bottle, like a, a sauce a brown sauce bottle." I said, "You can do what you like." He said, "Where do you want to put it? I want to put it in the engine." Why? He said, "So that when I open the bonnet, I can go in and I can squirt it, and it'll go all in my face." Hmm. Of course, I'm laughing, and I said, "You know what that'll do? That'll sting in your eyes because it's got vinegar in it. Trust me, it'll sting. So don't get it in your eyes." So uh, and that's the that's the brown sauce shot, but that was a gag that he thought of, not me. And I, it was a great gag. I'd uh, I'd use it. <laughs> Simon Goodell did the voice of Bump the Elephant, who made a cameo in the Day Full of Fun. Oh, did he? I didn't know that. Yeah, he yeah. did the voice of Bump the Elephant. Right. Well, thank you for having me and taking part in this fun. fun. Pleasure. And it was I love watching that video as a child, and I still love it today. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, I, I think it's one of those things that's kind of, uh, it'll never die. It's it, It's got time, you know, into the future because it's so innocent and so nice. And I think that, again, they did a great job and uh, I was more than happy to be in it. And I'm happy, even more happy that it's got a million views. I think that's absolutely fantastic. I think all of them, all the videos they've done, it's got a million views because I think they're, so, they're still timeless today. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. And the first one, it was 30 years old today, this year. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 40 years. That's a heck of 30, 30 years. Days. Yeah, 30. That's a heck of a time, even so. Am I that old? <laughs> That's not right. I can't be right. Mm -hmm. But lovely for having me on. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you so much.